You're listening to the Sketchnote Army Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rohde, the author of the Sketchnote Handbook and the Sketchnote Workbook. And this is the podcast where I chat with sketchnoters and visual thinkers and try to understand what makes them tick. Hey, are you looking for the ideal sketchbook for your sketchnoting practice? The Sketchnote Idea Book is the sketchbook designed for sketchnoters. Equipped with no bleed, no show through paper, you can take almost any marker or pen you can throw at it. Get 10% off with code ARMY at airship.store. Hey everyone, it's Mike and I'm here with my friend Natalie Taylor. Natalie, welcome to the show. It's so good to have you. Thanks, Mike. It's so good to meet you. And thank you so much for inviting me on to the show. It's good to have you. And I love your accent. We mentioned this before we started recording your uh, British accent into the north, which I picked up. Um, it's fun to hear. I don't hear it all the time. So uh, I will enjoy that as we have a discussion. <laughs> um, tell us about who you are and what you do. So I am Natalie. I'm from the northeast, as you've mentioned, mm -hmm. in a um, small seaside town. And full time professionally wise, I'm a market manager at a brilliant university here in the northeast. Mm. Um, and I'm an avid sketch noter kind of on mm. the side in my spare time. That's great. And we'll definitely dive into the sketch noting details that's what this is all about for all the crazy fans of sketch noting yeah. <laughs> who are willing to listen to a podcast or watch a youtube video and and learn right so i think that's what it's all about um so i'm really curious so we know sort of what you're doing now obviously you've got you've got some skills in marketing how did you end up where you're at and maybe particularly like from a visual thinking perspective were there things that happened when you were a little girl that sort of directed you or maybe in your college years or you know school years that sort of guided you to where you are now and what what would be those key moments if you were to give me a uh, an origin story i like to call it like a superhero <laughs> origin story for natalie taylor i love that i love the the um the avengers origin story that's what it always makes me think of <laughs> yes um <laughs> yeah so um i mean looking back it's, it's interesting when i've listened to the the podcast i've, I've li listened to so many episodes um and i notice a lot of people tend to describe that they've always been um very artistic and and very kind of into doodling and drawing um for me I think look I used to think that I wasn't very creative but looking back I've mm. I've always been quite creative but um more in the writing sense mm. um and I have always doodled but I wasn't kind of, I wouldn't sit and, and draw and do these kind of detailed drawings. It would be very basic, like smiley face, love hearts and mm. flowers. <laughs> um, and it's, I would say it's quite a recent thing that I've got into sketch note and probably, I mean, I say recently, it's probably nine or 10 years that I've been mm -hmm. um, into that kind of presenting information in, in that way. Um but yeah, it's interesting because I didn't have that kind of artistic background, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, at university, I studied, studied medium communications, which um, at the time was, it got given a bad rap a lot of the time as mm. a degree that isn't sometimes as respected as some degrees. Um, but looking back at that, that was very creative and a lot of the tools that mm. I used in that degree are tools that I still use now. So things like Adobe InDesign, Photoshop, um, even, you know, kind of setting up a website, creating a magazine. So it was all kind of creative and, and using graphics in that way. Mm. Um, and like you mentioned, I've had um, my professional background is in marketing and communication. So I've been in that for around 11 years ish. Mm. Um, and it's it's a little long winded way into how I got into sketch noting, um, but when I finished university, I wasn't quite sure what to do, um, and it was just based around what what jobs I was looking at at the time, and I thought oh, PR and marketing officer sounds quite fun, um, and it that that's creative. It was creating leaflets and a lot of design work. So I suppose that is kind of in the artistic realm, um. And it was for the local fire brigades so that was creating a lot of um, leaflets and newsletters for the local community about fire safety. Um, 
so that's how I kind of got into marketing and having quite a creative role professionally. Um, but it wasn't until my next role, because that was a one year temporary contract that um, I learned about sketch noting. Um, and that was I was working for an, a very, very small startup in the ed tech field. Mm. Um, and they had this brilliant software, which was the result of academic research, all about collaborative learning. So it started on these this amazing technology. I don't know if you've ever seen like the huge tabletops. I think when they were around, it was around five thousand pound. I think for one of these tables. <laughs> I've I've seen the Microsoft Surface table, like the original Surface, yeah, years and years yeah. ago. Yeah. Something yeah, like that. exactly. So similar to that, and there's, um, I think it worked on that, and there's, um, the Promethean giant tables. Um, mm. so it was this for this very specific, um, hardware, and then it adapted to be for iPads. But when I say small startup, it was me, um, the director. There were other directors, but not kind of working full time, and then a, a computer programmer. So I was doing everything, marketing and communications and trying to raise the profile of this small startup company. Um, and as part of that, um, it involved building up the Twitter following and and finding mm -hmm. things that that people would find interesting. I don't think I've actually mentioned, but basically the target audience was teachers and educators. Mm -hmm. So it was when I started um, going on basically education Twitter that I came across Sylvia Duckworth. Oh yeah. Um, whose sketch notes I absolutely love. So that was my kind of first experience of sketch notes. And I would just look at them and be like, wow, these are absolutely brilliant. And they're just conveying the message she wants to convey so well. Um that I thought I'd I'd absolutely love to give this a go. Um hmm. but I, I just I I did find it really, really hard. <laughs> um <laughs> to kind of to get to grips with how to actually start mm -hmm. um and at the time I would just kind of share her sketch notes with the um with our Twitter followers and because they would find them really interesting and then as part of that role um there was also the Bet show in London this is a very like international education technology conference mm. um and we would go along to that we'd we didn't have our own stand, but we'd be on like hardware um, stalls and mm. demonstrating how the hardware could be used with with our software. Got it. Um, but then there was just snippets of time I had to go and um, watch some of the keynote speakers. So I remember trying to take in, Sylvia had put some advice out on how to do sketch notes, but I had mm -hmm. at the time um, a, a little iPad mini and I didn't have a stylus. So <laughs> I remember just trying to do sketch notes just with my finger on the iPad mini, um, which was really hard. <laughs> yeah, frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried that. I, I, I can relate. <laughs> I have, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's so tricky. Um, and and Sylvia shared kind of guidance on, on tools and things, but I just, I clicked mm -hmm. on the links and it was, um, it was this stylus that wasn't available in the UK mm. and I just couldn't find an alternative. So I would try doing them with my finger. And then I think I'd just become a little bit dis disillusioned with it because I just thought mine sure. are never going to be anything that I could, you know, present to anyone or um, that people would find interesting. Um, but then as time went on, I just kind of practiced in my own time. Um, and then I went on, Jap I went to Japan on holiday and um they're obviously known for stationery and technology so i got yeah. a stylus there um, and just kind of played around with it on the flight home on procreate i'm still to this day not sure why i didn't ever think of trying analog and just getting paper mm. and pens <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah um i think maybe i did try but just with kind of fell tips and by rows and then i just was a bit mm. like oh these aren't very visually appealing <laughs> just didn't fit right yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, I think gradually I just, I just built up and just practiced. Um, and with this stylus, I did start doing some. Um, that would take me hours because I would do a lot of tweaks afterwards and, mm -hmm. um, and and start, you know, tweaking around. Um, but then I think I just, 
I started suggesting to my manager, but again, because we were such a small business, I, my, I had to have a lot of different hats on, so I couldn't yeah. sit there just exploring sketch note. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I said, you know, these these are really kind of um intriguing teachers. So um occasionally I would I would start one um, and then do a lot of it in my own time. But I started doing some um almost as a marketing technique. So um there would be some so essentially what the software was was um like card sorting activities you might mm -hmm. have one on a particular moment in history um and then students would have to work with them and match them up and group them together and it was all about mm -hmm. how it demonstrated their thinking and how they'd come to a conclusion um so i would just do things like um 17 reasons to create your own card sort or mm. um you know the top 10 things about collaborative learning um and i would often i'd develop the confidence to write using the stylus and it it looked quite nice mm -hmm. but still the drawing was just not something that i was very confident <laughs> in so i would sometimes kind of get you know free icon libraries and just put sure. them in instead of actually drawing them myself um but they were quite they were really successful actually at getting the message across as to what the mm. software was um and and kind of sylvia's work in sketchnote and, and and hers um was still something like i aspired towards but um mm -hmm. I, I i became more confident to share them on on our channels mm. it's interesting that you had sort of this um i guess an inspiration sylvia right so doing this work so you knew it's kind of nice when you see that like even if you feel like i can't quite achieve it like i have a and a focusing point. And I'm going to go for that. And you try, you're trying all these techniques. You're buying an iPad. You're trying to use your finger. You're trying yeah. analog and it doesn't fit. And then you find a stylus in Japan and like you keep on moving. Like there was something about you that's uh, pretty dedicated. Like you're going to, you're going to get there yeah. <laughs> somehow. You didn't know how you're going to get there. And you kept on fighting through it, even though, you know, a lot of people might have given up and it seems like you didn't. So why do you think that was that you didn't give up? That's really fascinating to me. Um, yeah, I, th I suppose when you've said it like that, I suppose I was quite determined. Um, I think the main reason is that I just enjoyed it so much. So, mm. um, like I said, I couldn't dedicate much time in the professional day to it, even though sure. there were marketing tools. Um, but I might do the, the baseline in maybe an hour. And then that weekend, I would spend a few hours of my own time doing it purely because mm. I just really enjoyed it. And, mm -hmm. um, a lot of Sylvia's sketch notes you know a lot of them were based towards educators but a lot of them were quite general mm. um and some of them she did were around mental health which is something else that i'm really passionate about and mm. that mental health sketch notes are probably one of the biggest things i do now um okay. since i'm so i'm not in that role anymore so kind of the sketch notes that i do have completely changed um mm. but that's how i first started learning them so um i think the reason why i stuck with it is because I saw how impactful Sylvia's were on me. Um, yeah. And I think I remember printing off a couple before and kind of keeping them up. She did one on the iceberg effect, mm -hmm. like um, things that you see on the surface versus what's actually going on underneath. And I just found them really inspirational. Mm. I could, so I can, I'm sort of putting pieces together. Like on the one hand, you enjoyed it, right? So there's one component. I find like when you have multiple components that you're more likely to stay driven. So you had the, mm -hmm enjoyment part of it mm -hmm. you could see yourself you had enough success that you thought maybe i could do some portion of it right you talked about doing you like the writing but then you would mm -hmm. like use icons right so that part of it too but then on top of it you could see the effectiveness of the sketch notes she did from a from a marketing perspective you know like what works in marketing it's obviously impacting you you're starting to see it probably in other places like mm -hmm. this is an opportunity and i can see how it could work but there was still like a gap of like getting to where you could do them to communicate. Then that just took time. Right. So. Exactly. Exactly. Um, That's interesting. It's I think, and I, I, I don't, I think it must've been around two years ago um, that I came across um, you, your book, Sketch Not mm -hmm. Army, and that completely rev revolutionized the whole thing again. Um, oh, wow. I just came across this whole community that I didn't know existed. I, I didn't know mm -hmm. that, I knew Sylvia had a, a sketch note and book, but it was mm -hmm. um, specifically for educators. Right. Um, so I'd been kind of beavering away doing these things in my own time, but without 
much kind of guidance or training. I think I did find Doug Neal's YouTube channel. He's great. Yeah, Doug is great. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. So the, I did a lot of his um, tools. And I remember there was simple tips on how to practice. So he had, um, mm. I think I call it the dictionary game, basically getting a dictionary, mm. open it at a ram- random page and sketch <laughs> note and a word. That's a good one. Um, yeah. yeah, and that really helped just just gradually kind of dipping my toes in. Um, and it's it's only been the last couple of years that I've I've actually shared them on my own channel and done them on things Got that it. I'm directly passionate about. Cool. So it's really like a it's sort of like a been a progression, right? You've been slowly building up your skills and now you're at the point where you are doing your own sketch notes and you're sharing them on your channel and mm-hmm. you've got you've built those skills up through practice. I think that sort of reminds me to say to people who are new to this, like they'll come to me when I do little workshops and say, so, mm-hmm. you know, how can I do this? Like, well, you know, uh, it's not, it's not easy, but it's still fun. Like you can do, you can have success to a certain degree, but to get better at it, you're going to have to practice. Like I, I don't know how to tell you that there's a substitute. There's no magic pill you can take. There's no, can't jump in a time machine. You know, you just have to, do it. And I think, you know, you, what I see, um, I'd identify in your story is this idea of overlapping. I keep coming across this when, when I can do one thing that overlaps with something else that I like, Mm -hmm. that's more successful. If I can layer in a third thing, like that's like the success rate goes up, the more I can integrate several parts of my Mm -hmm. uh, life or my interests. Right. So like if you're a gardener, let's say, if you're passionate about gardening, well, planning your garden, like as a sketch note, might be really fun on multiple levels, right? So you're more likely to do it and really get into it and maybe build a technique, right? That you could then, Definitely. maybe you could actually teach other people how to, how you approach that, right? So that's yeah. pretty cool. And I see that in your story. So that's really fun. And it's really satisfying for me to hear, you know, someone who's sort of dedicated and committed to, to following the passion and multiple passions to arrive where you are, which is really cool. Thank you. Yeah, I, d- I do absolutely love sketching out. And I, I think that's the main thing is that I just mm. really enjoy it. And I would see some sketch notes and think, uh, and when, when I discovered the community on Instagram and looked at your sketch notes and sketch notes in the book, it was, it was a case of like, wow, these are absolutely fantastic. And I might not be there now but I can kind of keep practicing and Mm -hmm. the exercises in your book and and Doug's channel um, and I've got another book um, that's just just purely doodling different objects Mm -hmm. Um, and when I was had to self-isolate with COVID last Mm. um, over the last new year I think it was I just spent hours just (laughs) just doodling and practicing. (laughs) Well that's good you probably accelerated your skills there yeah without you know like (laughs) <laughs> taking a bad situation and making it into something worthwhile, right? So yeah, I got COVID and all I got was better at dr- at drawing, right? Or whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a nice positive spin on something not good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You take, make the best out of what you've got. Um, yeah. Well, this is really fascinating. It's I love hearing the origin story, my favorite part of the podcast, because I think it's interesting for me to hear it, but I can imagine there's people listening. I don't even know who they are who feel like, oh, you know, I'm a marketing manager, like I can't sketch note, but Natalie's a marketing manager and she sketch notes like, and her, that's her story. She really had to work at it and it took a long time. Well, I can do that. Right. So there's sort of a, a, you can relate to people because there's such a variety. We try to find such a variety of people Mm -hmm. that hopefully it inspires anybody who listens that they can do it. It just, you know, it takes work like anything worthwhile. It's mm-hmm. going to take work. You said you're a writer. Like the only way to get better at writing is to write, right? There's yeah. no substitute, you know, and reading, of course, reading to get inspired by like, wow, look how they, look how they turned that phrase or the way they structured that thing. Right. I want to copy that. Like, exactly. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's definitely a form of imitation is really important. So imitating, you know, what other people doing, but then mm-hmm. I think that, you know, Austin Cleon often talks about this idea that uh, copying is helpful because as much as you try to copy that other person, you're not going to get an exact copy. Eventually your personality is going to come through on it and you're going to add your own little tweaks and twists and it becomes your own without you really realizing it. So um, there is definitely a benefit to, you know, copying people to sort of get better and figure out where you're going. Right. That's very helpful. Yeah, definitely. For you, Sylvia Duckworth, I guess is probably one of those key figures that you were trying not so much to copy, but to emulate and to follow and, 
you know, produce something on the on the level of Sylvia that would communicate the way you saw it, it impacted you, which is really, really fun to hear. Yeah, exactly. I really love her work. So I'm really curious about what is some exciting sketchnoting related project that you're working on. You mentioned mental health sketchnotes is sort of where you're at. Is there, is there is there one that you're doing now or a series or something maybe that's coming up that you're excited about that you could share with us? Yeah, so I think in general, um, I love doing sketch notes on on mental health. And I, th- I think that came about with if I was having a particular struggle, mm-hmm. I would um, just just Google that struggle. So it might be overthinking, for example, which is one mm-hmm. of my um, more popular sketch notes. Um, and I'd just put into Google ways to stop overthinking. <laughs> um, <laughs> and rather than just read that article and, and come away with maybe a, a point that I was going to try that week and then forget about, I would start sketch noting that and sketch noting podcasts and books to mm. to actually learn from that and then the bonus is that then helping other people um so I've got a project coming up with um a leading kind of mental health psychology publication mm. that I'm going to do um a collaborative post with and that's going to be on four ways on how to be kind to yourself oh, wow. um so it's it's kind of in the similar realm to the overthinking one that i've done mm-hmm. um and then what's interesting is sometimes um i've noticed my friends who are very supportive and, and family they'll come up with ideas and say have you thought about doing this so one thing that i'm doing at the moment is baby sketch notes mm. so i've got um quite a few friends who are having babies at the moment um Mm. and one of my friends said have you thought about doing like a baby sketch note about their kind of the day they were Mm. born and so I took that idea and and thought of different ways to to make it a bit more interesting so it's like what um song is number one at the time the horoscope Mm. the Chinese zodiac um and actually um getting those printed and framed for um for friends and people who'd like them so that's a very that's cool. recent thing that I've started to do. Um, and I've recently done some work with an ADHD podcast um, mm. who they thought would be really interesting to um, sketch out one of their podcast episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's been fascinating as well because um, I did the sketch note and my style is quite... It, it is a little bit more wordy than some people's mm-hmm. um, and there can be a lot going on. And, and when she shared it on her channel, um, there was like a lot of really positive feedback. So there was people um, mm. saying, I remember one comment that said something like, um, I'd absolutely love a whole book like mm. illustrated in this way on ADHD because it's exactly how my brain works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then there was a few comments that said the complete opposite. Mm. Um, in that it's just too overwhelming and there's too much to take in. Um, so it's interesting how it it works in that way. For some people it resonates mm. and and some people it just it just doesn't work for them in completely opposite extremes. Right. Yeah, we uh, I've got kids that have ADHD and they're the two boys that have it are the way they react to it is quite different, right? So they have different mm-hmm. experiences. So I think within ADHD there's like you could have someone with ADHD who thinks this is amazing, this is the way I think. And then somebody else who's got a slight variation of it would be yeah. it would be overwhelming to them, right? So or mm-hmm. just people in general, right, that can't maybe get into it. So that's exactly. I think that's the nature of just humans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, if I go to my Amazon page and look at the look at the reviews, there's quite a few good reviews, but there's some bad ones too. Let mm, you know mm-hmm. that you know I, I'm a fan of Seth Godin. He says once you release your book into the world, you just stop looking at the reviews because <laughs> the book now belongs to the public, and you can't really do anything. It belongs to them, and like looking at reviews doesn't do you any good. So I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good well done on the self-discipline there yeah yeah i can imagine it's tempting to rake through them and then you've got to try and train your brain to focus on the positive ones i guess yeah it's probably it was probably harder at the beginning when there was very few because mm-hmm. i felt like um we had a technical issue with the kindle version that a lot of people complained about if you look way back in the 
all the one star reviews are Kindle failures, oh, which we right. had no control over, right? So that just was that a, must have been so a technical accident. We eventually sorted it out and got it solved. But in the meantime, there's all these one star reviews, which you can't really remove. So mm-hmm. that feeling like you have to answer like what happened over and over again, and there's nothing you can do. Like it's, <laughs> but you know, at some point you just kind of let it go. Like the book's been around for 10 years. So mm-hmm. I guess that's more important than if there's enough good reviews on, on the book. Mm-hmm. So, and in some ways, maybe that's uh, the same thing when you do a sketch note, there's just going to be people that don't relate to it and it doesn't work for them. And that's okay. Yeah, that's, that's very true. It's better to focus on the ones who it does resonate with because uh, they will appreciate it. And then you can make them your, the audience that you are thinking about as you're doing your work, like those people will really like it. And if someone else doesn't, there's, plenty more on uh, <laughs> social media to look at right you don't have to yeah. look at my thing <laughs> exactly they're all so different aren't they with sketch and styles I find it fascinating and I don't think you necessarily I mean I didn't kind of set out with a style in mind um mm-hmm. and I think especially my last probably the last year I think um the, mine have a particular sc- style but when I look back at the ones when I started sketchnote maybe seven, eight years ago on my little mm. iPad, um, they're just completely different. And I use yeah. all sorts of wild colours and whereas now they're quite torn back and I'll just use one colour. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of um learning as you go. And I mean the podcast's been absolutely amazing, like hearing about different techniques and tools and tips. Um, so that's really, really helped. Yeah. I'm just I just happened to pop up Instagram here and had it up so I could be aware of your stuff. And I happen to look at six reasons to visit Maple and Doe, which I assume is like, a, <laughs> is like a little shop that you like. Right. And it's, it's just really straightforward and simple and fun. Like there's six really simple. So I think, you know, we, and it's, I think the thing too, that um, sketch noting does just by the nature of how it works is you typically have everything on one page, right? So mm-hmm. if you, you don't have to look through multiple pages, right. You can just get everything out of page and sort of look through it and, I can definitely see that the if I scan back through your stuff, the as you keep on improving, like you keep on trying new things. And that's really good to see. And I, you know, it does make sense now that you tell me that your background is in writing and that's a real strong thing for you. Me too. Like um for my book, I wrote the whole manuscript before I drew a single thing, right? So I think in words too. So sometimes mm-hmm. I have to remind myself, okay, you can draw something, Mike, but I could, you know. <laughs> I can do like lettering and text and still have fun with the layouts and stuff and just little images sprinkled in and that's okay. Right. It's nice that there's a, that variation, right. You could be really visual and do lots of drawings and very little text on one side. And then on the other side, you could be very textual with just drawings as little sprinkles, right. And anywhere in between there, which is a great, you know, it's great that the sketch note community is so varied that everybody can sort of come at it and express it in their way, which is great to see. Exactly. And that's really interesting that you said that you've um, have tended to think more in text form as well, because yeah. your um, visuals and illustrations are brilliant. So I would never have like thought that it come from the other way around. If that makes yeah. sense. It yeah. surprises people. Yeah. Like, you know, a lot of times for me to solve a problem, I might write out the problem first. Oh, right. Right. And then it's sort of like it enters into my verbal side to quote Doug Neal. Right. And then once I understand it verbally, because that's how I was trained as a kid. Yeah. Then I then I can sort of engage the visual side of me, which I probably did more drawing before I knew how to write and read. So, so mm-hmm. you know, those then kick in and sort of like layer on top of it. So it's mm-hmm. it's pretty fun. Um well this that sounds like a really fun project. I can't wait to see when it comes out, you know, as later on in the show we'll send you to Natalie's uh social media connections so you can go follow her work and see when those pop up. This episode of the Sketchnote Army podcast is brought to you by Concepts, a perfect tool for sketchnoting, available on iOS, Windows, and Android. Concepts' vector-based drawing feature gives you the power to adjust your drawings anytime you like. You can nudge the curve of a line, swap out one brush for another, or change the stroke thickness and color at any stage of your drawing, saving hours and hours of rework. Vectors provide clean, crisp, high-resolution output for your sketch notes at any size you need, large or small. Never worry about fuzzy sketch notes again. Concepts is a powerful, flexible tool that's ideal for sketch noting. Search Concepts in your favorite app store to give it a try. 
let's shift into tools now that I see uh, some of your work. I would love to hear, like, what are your favorite pens? Do you have favorite notebooks? Um, and then, of course, uh, second would be your digital tools, how you use digital tools. Um, yeah, so um, I think I mentioned earlier, I, I got into Sketchnote and via the digital side. Um, mm -hmm. So it was only through the podcast and when I ordered your book that I kind of um, realized a lot of people start off on analog. Right. Um, and it was kind of, I, I was still doing them digitally even though I knew that because I couldn't get my head around how, because I'd started digitally um, mm -hmm. I couldn't mm -hmm. get my head around how you would know how everything would fit onto one page yeah. um, because I was so used to, I'd start off and then I'd make it a lot smaller and push it to one corner. And I was like, right. I can't do that on a piece of paper. <laughs> yeah. um, so it was on a whim that um, I was out trying to find some trainers. I couldn't find any. And I went into this shop called The Works that we have in the UK. I think they have it in the US, but it's not as much of a big thing in the mm. US I don't think um it's it's book stationery it tends to have things really um good discount mm -hmm. um and I got this little um I know you, you won't be able to see it um if you just listen but just like a really small one um like small little sketchbook yes it's a square uh, sketchbook with a hard cover and a spiral spiral um uh binding I guess is the word yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah exactly and it's got slightly thicker um thicker than printer paper and I thought I could just start doing some little mini ones and at mm. the same time um I picked up some brush pens mm -hmm. and I started writing with the brush pens and they were absolutely brilliant and I thought oh, actually I could start doing that so I don't think the sketchbook's got a particular um name the brush pens that I first started using are called Crawford and Black um really cheap in the works here mm. in the UK um and then as I progressed with the, the paper side, I started, um, I found this old sketchbook that I'd had. Like I said, I've not, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself an artist. I've not, would, wouldn't sit and draw in a sketchbook. But mm -hmm. I kept holding on to this book. I think I was thinking I might use it as a scrapbook. I'd had it for years. So that's very similar to the one I've just mentioned, but it, it's much bigger and it's also square. Mm -hmm. So it lends itself really well to Instagram posts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um and and then for for the actual pens um just a few months ago sharpie gel pens are there 0 0.7 yeah i found they're really good for doing um a lot of the actual words on the sketch notes and then stadler i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing that right mm -hmm. um stadler brush pens i got them in loads of different colors yeah um and I use the thick side of that to do titles, and then I'll use the um, the Sharpie gel pen to do the actual text and little drawings. Um, and then one thing, I, I, so I've got a bigger pencil case, but then I've started, I've got like a tiny, really mm. thin one that keeps maybe three or four pens. Um, and I'll try and keep that tiny one and then my little sketchbook in my bag wherever I go. So I've got mm. it in, in my bags. Yeah, exactly. Rough and ready for for in your go bag, which is yeah. Cool. <laughs> the best sketchbook is the one you have with you, right? So <laughs> exactly, <laughs> that's that's good. I've uh, you mentioned the Sharpie uh, gel pens. I've been really impressed with those as well. We have them in the states, and I've uh, tried them in the past, and really like the the gel uh, ink that they have manufactured is really smooth and dark. Mm -hmm. Seems to dry pretty quickly. So I've been yeah. really impressed with the, uh, I think it's labeled the S gel here. I don't know if that's the same there, but it is, Sharpie yeah. gel. It is. So mm -hmm. if you haven't tried those, if you're listening and you haven't tried the Sharpie uh, gel pens, give it a try. They of course make uh, alcohol based um, permanent markers of all kinds that you can pick up. Um, but you know, they will bleed through p most mm -hmm. paper unless it's thick and um, they do have a alcohol scent to them. Right. So that's something mm -hmm. to consider a gel would be, you know, scentless. And um, I think if I'm right, the the gel pens are also water resistant, at least, or maybe waterproof. I'm not sure. I think once it goes on the page, if it gets wet, it's not going to wash away like, say, a, you know, um, a regular felt tip marker that's not permanent. So I think yeah. both those are permanent markers. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I that's interesting. You mentioned the Stadler uh, brush pens. It's the two-sided, right? So there's like two ends. Exactly. Right? Yeah. I forgot to say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
it's um those are those are nice uh pens i've seen those around i've not tried them much um so i, I need to go i think i need to go to the, the office supply store and uh load up on some new things yeah <laughs> i know that's the thing with this podcast you just like oh i want to try that now i want to try spending that. your money i'm spending your money <laughs> exactly <laughs> so talk a little bit about your digital you said you started with digital um you sort of hinted at procreate is that the tool that you still use have you found any other it tools is. and then uh, tell us about this japanese stylus or have you upgraded to uh, an apple pencil or what's your digital status um, yeah, so so with digital, I don't think I mentioned earlier, but a huge part of um, the sketch note and journey for me, and kind of starting to share sketch notes, was um, getting an iPad Pro because I did mm. find it very difficult with this um, this stylus I had. It was a stylus that um, you know has the little circle, plastic circle on the end. Oh, I know, I know. I had this one. Yeah, I know which one you're yeah. talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. It, it wasn't very um precise i found it quite difficult um yeah. and it was around it was like the second main covid lockdown and i had a lot of time on my hands i, I was sketching out and more but they just they just took quite a while and the, the surface was quite small and the ipad mini um and my manager in my previous role nominated our team for like a um like this special award thing um and we won that so we got a it, we each got a 300 pound voucher to use wow. on um a variety of di- there was so many you could just spend it on clothes holidays etc um and i thought oh this might be my excuse to get an ipad pro <laughs> <laughs> because i'd wanted one for so long <laughs> cover cover a good part of part of it right exactly um and because it was covid and i wasn't going on holiday i'd I'd managed to save a little bit of money because obviously we weren't going anywhere. Um, and so that was a big part of it. But when I chatted with friends and family about, oh, shall I get this iPad Pro? Um, I made a pact with myself. If I was going to do that, then I would have to share some of the mm. sketch notes. Um, so I kind of made like a little pact with myself to to mm. do that. Um, and it was when I started sharing the sketch notes that I think I must have started using like hashtag sketch note and I'd click on that. And I think that's when I came across oh. um, your work, the sketch note army. Um, and then obviously I came across things like the visual jam, sketch effect, right. um, sketch academy, all of these things. And I was like, wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think at its core still procreate. Um and again, I thought if I'm getting the iPad Pro, I'm going to get the the um, proper pencil. Okay. Um, one thing that I do use, because I don't use an Apple phone, don't have an iPhone, mm-hmm. um, but I love my iPad. I wanted some way of things transferring across easy. Um, mm-hmm. So I use a combination of Evernote and Note Shelf. Okay. Um, because you can get... Um, note shelf only on ipad i think but mm-hmm. then evernote you can sync it so that anything oh, really? you do on note shelf syncs okay um so often because i use sketch notes in um i don't necessarily share but in kind of planning and productivity and mm-hmm. um so i sometimes plan my day out in sketch note form so i've done that on my ipad i want it on my phone so i've got right. it when i'm going around on my day because exactly. i can't yeah. really drag the ipad around yeah yeah so then that syncs over. Now it's on your phone, wherever you are, or on your desktop, I suppose, if you've got Evernote there. Yeah, that's a, that's exactly. a smart idea. Yeah, there's. I think there's lots of these um, integrations that um, often get overlooked that could make that could make the connection between. Like, I like this tool, but I want to use it this way. There's likely some kind of connection or way. There's a way to do it, I suppose. So that's pretty yeah, cool. definitely. It'd be interesting to see, and I haven't explored Evernote for a long time. If Evernote's inc- improved their um, their drawing tools in that you could, you could technically like draw right in Evernote on the iPad. I would suspect there must be an iPad app on of Evernote, but I don't know what kind of drawing capabilities it has. Maybe <laughs> it doesn't have very good ones, and it would be fr- more frustrating. <laughs> than yeah, helpful, right? <laughs> I think um, I, I can't remember why I didn't just use Evernote as the actual tool because I use Note Shelf and it syncs to Evernote. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's because Note Shelf was like a one-off fee of maybe yeah 
eight Instead pounds, of a subscription. and then yeah, yeah. Whereas Evernote was a subscription, um, but you can use the free version to sync. Um, Got but it. it does have some nice tools. Um, but I don't think, yeah, I'm not sure why I haven't really used it more. I know Notechef's really powerful. It's a, a tool. I I think that's what I use to present from when I do oh, presentations right, really? because I can do I can move the pages around. I can present, and then the way I teach sketch doing is I like to draw right on the presentation. And the cool thing is when I'm done, then I can just export that to a PDF and send it to the students and it's all bundled up. It's the thing they saw. It matches the recording if they see the recording. And it's a really convenient tool. I find Noteshelf really great. That's brilliant. Yeah, so, it is really yeah. good. I did not know that it uh, synced with Evernote. I'm not an Evernote user, but that's really good information to know in case I run yeah. into an Evernote user, right? And the yeah, tools are exactly. pretty powerful. I think all those yeah. like those note-taking tools, their tools have gotten a lot better. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's really great. Definitely. And, you know, when I listen to the podcast and people recommend new tools and, um, you know, I know um, Concepts is the sponsor, I always want to try these things, but sometimes I just don't get the time to right. sit and explore. Um, and I think, especially because doing it analog is quite new for me, um, that's an avenue I'm exploring. And I think hmm. one of the other reasons I started exploring analog is because Procreate had an update. And that just the pens just became too complicated and it wasn't mm. it just wasn't working. But now um I found the right brush again on Procreate. So I'm doing a mixture. Mm. Um and there's a nice feature where you can kind of favorite the brush thickness, which is really, yes. really useful. Yeah, I've used that too. Very useful. I think you and, and this now we're getting nerdy, but like in the Procreate <laughs> size control, like if you press and hold in a certain location. Right. It, you can like lock it and a little mark will appear there and then exactly. you can jump from mark to mark. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When I come across that, I thought this is amazing because I'll have one for the headers and one for the yeah. um, subheaders or even just, you know, the, the little doodles. Uh -huh. Um, It's so much easy because before I think that's why I was making some things massive, something small, and I just right. lost track of what was meant to be what. Yeah. And then, you know, you're using the same brush and you're just changing the size of it. So you just touch the size you want and away you go which is nice exactly cool well um now we're at the point where we talk about tips so the way i frame it is someone's listening they're a visual thinker of some level whatever that might mean to them and they're um they, they're excited they like the community they like doing sketch noting but they feel like maybe they're stagnating or they're in a plateau or just need just need a little inspiration you know it's winter time here in the north um so Maybe they just need a little inspiration, like spring is coming, you know, whatever. But <laughs> what would be three things you would tell that person to encourage them? Um, yeah, so I think, and I'm not sure if I've got four or not. <laughs> or you can do you can do more than three if you wish. That's fine. <laughs> I suddenly thought of loads of tips. Um, so <laughs> the first thing I would say um, in line with, you know, not saying everyone needs an iPad Pro, um, but just kind of investing in what you love. So if, if you love Sketchnote and it is kind of investing and that might be in um, time or, um, you know, act or courses. Um, so that's really helped me is just dedicating a bit of time and, and sometimes money to get a really good course. And it can really elevate your sketch notes mm. to the next level or just get you back into it again um often the course is a kind of collaborative so you, you meet different people as well which is helpful and, and learn from others um so that's one thing I would say um but then equally as much as it's kind of invest and improve I wanted to say kind of recognize what your strengths are so um for some people they might be held back because there's the comparison thing like what we were discussing mm -hmm. earlier and you see some sketch notes that are very visual and these amazing illustrations that I love looking at um and I've had to reframe that because I've, I've had sometimes like moments of lacks of confidence thinking mm -hmm. oh mine are quite wordy I'm, I'm never going to be a natural illustrator and I've had to kind of think well my strength might be more in the sense of um listening to a podcast and picking out the key points mm -hmm. um and that's something that I do in in my professional role as as market manager is I might have to take an academic paper and try and present it in a, a nice way yeah um and that's so that's something that I've had to think is well what what are my strengths are I would say mm -hmm. to people um focus on your strengths as well as try and improve your weaknesses yeah um because everyone's sketch notes are different 
Yeah, that's that's a great tip. I love that one. Thank you. Um, and then another tip is to share your work. So um, I know it's not for everyone, but if if you are sometimes um, you know getting stuck in a rut, it can help to to share your work and break that barrier. Because I, I kind of kept my sketch not secret for for years. The ones that I did on mm. mental health and things. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them that I've shared I did maybe four years ago and just just didn't post um but that can really help um get your work out there and get feedback and also if you're sharing them on social media it helps to connect you with people Mm -hmm. I suppose you could even frame that as um maybe sharing doesn't have to be with the world but maybe it's a small group right there's some chat or something where you can share that work that's that's considered sharing right if it's to 10 of your best friends right that's you're still uh announcing to your friends and they can give you feedback so Exactly. And that's actually what I did first. I just started sending mm. them um, during COVID. I'd send them in um, like WhatsApp group chats and yeah. and people would be like, oh, wow, how have you not shared these before? So it kind of like dipping your toes in at first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you go to, you know, you go to the friendly audience first because exactly. as, you know, <laughs> social media cannot always be friendly, right? So No, exactly. <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> Interesting. Um, and then another one is um, just to write down your ideas. So sometimes I find if you're out and about um, and you're out in nature or, um, you know, you're away for the weekend, I think you sometimes get inspiration for sketch notes. But um, if you don't write them down, I'll keep them in like a, I've got Google Keeps. So I'll just kind of keep mm-hmm. a little ideas list and just throw them in there. Um, and it means that when I am, sat at home with my sketchbook or some time and my ipad pro i can actually bring that idea to life rather than thinking Mm. what was that again so that's been really helpful some kind of reference right some kind of a spark exactly um and then i don't don't know whether i'm on to fifth tip now (laughs) i'll be able to count them Um, later Um, but one is just kind of get involved with the the community as well um i think that's that's a, a tip that I would recommend um there's been a few that I've been involved with lately kind of um monthly hangouts and mm. um you know your layouts workshop and so I think that's just really helpful and again it's learning from people you might get tips mm. um that you've not thought of that might take 10 minutes I think one of your previous guests I think it was Reverend Geek said he um had like a 30 day challenge where we yeah. would just um sketch not a word for, for 30 days but sometimes you get those ideas from other people and communities yeah. that you're part of yeah and we have this if you're if you want an easy one it's uh sketch Note army has a slack channel you can join um, oh really there is uh yep every day there's someone in this in one of the channels who posts a prompt and you can be challenged to draw it and i think it's they challenge you to draw it in 30 seconds or something so it builds your icon your your thinking skills right so we have that channel. Uh, there's also probably the other benefit of that channel is um, any kind of events that happen. Lai Chi Chu, who's one of the members, she's like a hawk. She finds every a cool <laughs> event and she publishes it in the events announcements channel. So you'll find out about workshops or like the visual jam will post in there. So you get a, you get a sense of like what's coming, which is great. Oh, brilliant. That sounds yeah. great. Yeah, I'd love to join that. Thank yeah. you. So if you go to uh, sketchnotearmy.com, I think the slash slack should take you to the page and you can sign up for free. It's all free. We just, Brilliant. we don't I'm just writing that down. <laughs> yeah. We don't save any of the, the back channel, like, cause we're just doing the free one, but um, mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's more spur of the moment. The, the, the inner interaction between people in the community, which is pretty mm-hmm. cool. So yeah. Anybody that's listening, including Natalie are welcome to sign <laughs> up and hang out in there. There's a really cool bunch of people in there. So that could be, if you know your public sharing could be in the Slack channel, right? With friendly sketch noters who will give you encouragement, which you know we aim to have our community be an encouraging community. So um, I think that's mm-hmm. a good place to start if you wanted to follow that tip that Natalie just gave. Well, um, I'll be sure to count up the tips and I'll give the numbers to them in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course, we'll have show notes for all the things we've talked about. Um, We're near the end of the podcast. Can you believe it? Like suddenly this time has just flown by. Um, It has. I would love for you to share, like, what's the best places to go? Are there certain social media where you hang out? Is there a website we can go to 
to find out all the work that you're up to? Yeah, so the main place that I share my sketch notes is Instagram, and that's okay. at Natalie Roberta T. Um, and I also use LinkedIn, but that's Natalie R. Taylor. I did set up an actual LinkedIn page, but I just okay. tend to not post use much on that. Okay. Um, I don't actually post my sketch notes very much on LinkedIn, but I, mm. I do use it. Um, and I set up a Twitter, but again, I've posted a few times and not really mm. used it a lot um so i would say instagram okay got it and we'll make sure we put a link to that and i think i'm on your page now and it looks like you've got a campsite bio page with some specific things that you'd like people to check out first so that's nice that you got an extended list of things for things mm-hmm. for people to uh to dig into so that's really good and you can see her work there well natalie this has been so much fun thank you for joining us on the show and sharing your experience and encouraging people i think it's Again, another great episode that will encourage somebody out there who we can't even imagine right now who's listening to this episode and being inspired and trying something out, which is what this is all about. So thank you for making time to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I've absolutely loved it. And I love the idea that it could help someone. So thank you for saying that. Yeah, I think so. I think it definitely will help some someone. I, I'm often surprised. I think, you know, I do these podcasts and often you don't really hear much back and that's okay. Like I don't do it for that reason, but occasionally I'll talk to someone and say, I've listened to every one of your episodes. It's happened like four or five times recently. So like all the effort that you put into it, you think like, is anybody listening to this? I mean, I see people downloading it, but you don't hear anything. And then suddenly four or five people say, I listen to every episode. Like, wow. Okay. Well, I guess we're going to keep doing that. So um, it's really encouraging. And I think you're, it's definitely going to be encouraging to someone and many, many people potentially. So that's really great to hear. Thank you. I mean, I, I've absolutely loved listening to the podcast when I discovered it and it was mm. lockdown as well. So I'd go for these long yeah. walks and listen to, <laughs> I was listening to, to maybe two, three a day. Just thinking, wow. I was like, wow, there's eight or nine series of this. <laughs> You're like a um, super fan, Natalie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I am. And they were kind of packed into a certain time. I think I'm up to date now. There might be a few I've okay. missed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's quite a back catalog. So, well, thank you so much. And, um, I think for everyone who's listening, that's another episode of the Sketchnote Army podcast. Let's, uh, until the next episode, we'll see you soon. The Sketchnote Army podcast was created by me, Mike Rohde, and brought to you by Rohde Design Studios. It's produced and edited by Alec Polianis of Amp Creative Studios. The theme music was created by John Schiedemeyer. To support the creation of this show, I invite you to buy one of my books, The Sketchnote Handbook or The Sketchnote Workbook. You can find the books on Amazon or go to peachpit.com and use the code RODY40 for 40% off. Please share this podcast with other visual thinking friends and be sure to leave a nice rating on iTunes or your favorite podcast listening app so others can find the show. 